guys. Today I want to talk to you about my grandfather. So recently my cousin sent me this article that had a blurb on it about my grandfather. So my grandfather's name was Joe Jung and he died when I was a sophomore in high school. But he left this culinary legacy behind that the community still remembers and apparently is still talking about since the article that my cousin um, sent to me was just published a few, a little over a month ago. An article is entitled Six Dishes That Tell the story of San Francisco's Chinatown. And my grandfather's name comes up in the section that talks about fried chicken. And it tells about how Joe Jung brought this staple to Chinatown and how he first learned to cook his signature dish while working with black chefs at a restaurant called Zombie, Vi Zombie Kitchen. Well, actually, I thought it was called Zombie Village, but in the article they called it Zombie Kitchen. Anyway, my mom always calls it Zombie Village whenever she talks about it. But uh, as a child, I knew about this little bit of family history. And I always thought it was kind of strange that my Chinese grandfather worked in a restaurant called Zombie Village. Since I grew up in Chinatown, it certainly didn't sound like any of the other restaurant names that were out there. One of the things that my grandfather hoped to accomplish by opening his restaurant was to bring Chinese cuisine to the American community and then to bring American cuisine to the Chinese American and the Asian American community in a single restaurant where everyone could feel welcomed. And I only ever visited his restaurant on Larkin Street, which was not in Chinatown. And to me, it looked like no other Chinese eating establishment that I've ever been to. It had this kind of like tiki bar vibe to it. So like when you first walked in, it had an actual bar and you went up this ramp and it had these two different levels. It had like some typical, I guess the tables were like typically Chinese, uh, the round tables with a lazy Susan in the middle. Um, but the vibe to it was just so different. And the menu was different too. For example, my favorite thing that he made was custard. I'm kind of a sweets girl, so that makes sense. It came in these thick, heavy cups that made it feel so luxurious to me as a six-year-old. And I'm so fortunate that my mom was able to rescue some of these, um, this, the serving ware that he had. Okay, so here are the plates from his restaurant. Okay, so here's the first one. It says Zhou Zhang's. And in Chinese, oh, what does that say there? It says Zhong Ling Jiu Jia. That's like the smaller one, and then I haven't even bigger one. Here it is. Big size and a little size. So these are just two of the ones that my mom rescued for me. And they actually lived in our garage in the apartment building we're in because my grandfather owned that apartment building. And these actually like lived in the garage for like probably my whole childhood or most of it. And I didn't even pay any mind to them. Now they're like these treasured items to me. And actually, you know what? <laughs> I was reading that in Mandarin because that's what I speak. Um, my grandfather spoke Cantonese and I did like go to Chinese school for forever growing up, like my whole life. And that was in Cantonese. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna go get something for you guys to see. So my mom, she saved all my Chinese school books from when I was little. Like, I don't know why she would think I'd want these. That was not like a super fun time for me. I wonder if I could even read any of this in Cantonese now. I think it would be super hard for me. But that was all in Cantonese. And I have to admit that I speak very, very little Cantonese right now. And so when I look back at these, like, I don't know, some of you guys may have gone to Chinese school or even with me and may remember some of these fabulous stories but yeah she gave me she gave me this entire stack of them and even more than this but um yeah you guys mem may remember this i think it's walk you why you yeah anyway just to admit that i read everything in, in mandarin because that's what i speak now and cantonese is kind of i don't know where all those years of chinese school went but it did not have many much of an impact on me or at least I can't, well, I guess it's like if you don't use it, you lose it. And I didn't really use it. And I even made like little notes in it. I would make these little notes. Oh, look, see, I'd put my own. I see, I didn't know pinyin existed. And so I'd make my own little notes in there of what, how it was, how it was supposed to be said. Hmm. Yeah, that is interesting. I could read it all in Mandarin, but I couldn't read it in Ch Cantonese. I did make little notes here. See, chiu cup si chong. I wrote it out in what I thought was how it was supposed to be said. And I guess the, the the rest of these words I must have known how to say, but yeah, that's interesting. Two cups each are on. A little trip down memory lane. Anyway, back to what I was talking about with my grandfather. It was just like really exciting to me to be able to have this memorabilia from my grandfather's restaurant. And I'm not generally attached to physical things, but these plates are such a treasure to me. And a reminder of the pioneer that Zhou Zhang, my grandfather, was in the culinary world. And it wasn't just food he was bringing together. He was 
bringing together American and Chinese and this idea of cross-cultural cuisine and an appreciation for food that you may not have known, you may not have eaten growing up, nonetheless is part of who you are now. When I have down days, when I'm feeling like upset, or like I'm not measuring up to my own expectations of myself, I just think about my grandfather and the kind of person he was. And I take out these plates, these cool plates, these heavy duty plates with so much memories in them. And I remind myself of the kind of people that I come from. That's just a little ode to my grandfather and how I am really proud to be his granddaughter and I'm proud of the accomplishments he had and of the things that he did for San Francisco and for Chinatown and for the community there. So thanks for listening. And um, if you remember Joe Jung's restaurant or went there as a child or, or have your own memories of Chinese school or something like that, you know, leave it in the comments and let me know. Love to hear from you guys. So thanks for watching and be sure to check out our other blogs on resuscitatingyou.com. Oh yeah, look at this one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was some good times, huh? Hmm. Hmm.